Welcome back guys, in this video I'll be trying out AMD's FSR3 frame generation and AFMF in 4 games running on my ROG Ally. I have the set one extreme variant of this device. The idea here is to compare the performance of these two frame generation techniques. FSR3 frame generation relies on optical flow technology and temporal game data like motion vectors. This is why it cannot be implemented on a driver level basis. Its implementation depends on the game developers. AFMF on the other hand does not rely on any game data. It's AMD's driver level implementation of frame generation works with DirectX 11 and 12 titles. In order to get the best possible experience using any of these frame generation techniques, AMD recommends using them with games that are already running at at least 60 FPS, will be getting low input delay and less graphical artifacts. However, this does not mean that you cannot use any of these frame generation techniques with games that are running at an FPS lower than 60, like 30 to 50 FPS. This is exactly what I am going to demonstrate in this video. Which frame generation technique performs better when the base FPS is within a range of 30 to 50? I will kick things off with Starfield PC Game Pass version using a 25 watts manual profile, all 3 power values set at 25 watts. CPU boost disabled 720p resolution, connected my DualSense controller to Ally via Bluetooth mode. For this game, I have set the UMI buffer size to 6GB, my ally is running on BIOS version 337, I have installed the latest stable GPU drive from AMD and an LN version 24.4.1. First I will be running the vanilla version of the game, then I will enable AFMF and in the end I will be enabling FSR3 frame generation. Add an LN settings for the game, pre-sync enable, v-sync disable, anti lag setting enable, AFMF disable for the time being. This game supports FSR3 officially in game settings. Render resolution scale set to 70%. All settings set to low motion blur disabled. Pacing disabled. Anisotropic filtering set to 16 times. FSR3 enabled. Frame generation disabled. VRS disabled. Depth of field enabled. That's it. Using Adrenal Lens overlay to show you the performance metrics. Some space pirates are attacking our base. Here we are getting around 30 FPS in gun equipped. 30 to 35 FPS can absorb some jank. Explosion. Now I'll enable AFNR. Pause the game. AFMF can be enabled on the fly. Just open Adrenaline software, press Alt plus R keys together. From here just enable AFMF. Check its status, yeah it's active. Resume the game. Make sure VSync is disabled. Now observe the FPS counter. FPS increased up to 60, oh my god. Frame generation got disabled automatically. And I move the camera. I'm just standing still. FPS again increased up to 60. See this is the problem with AFMF. Frame generation got disabled again. According to AMD, AFMF disabled frame generation during fast visual motion. But here I just moved the camera at a normal speed. Did not move the camera in complete circles like this. Again frame generation got disabled. Poor performance. I am observing a performance regression after enabling AFMF. So I will just disable it now and enable FSR3 frame generation. AFMF disable. VSync enable. In game settings. FSR3 frame generation enable from here. Resume the game. Observe the FPS counter. FPS increase up to 70. I can observe the added amount of smoothness. FSR3 frame generation is definitely working in this game. Input delay is not an issue. FPS is staying within a range of 55 to 70. Not bad at all.
directly at the area the best part is when I move the camera in complete circles frame generation does not get disabled 67 to 69 FPS some pirates are still live so an easy win for FSR 3 frame generation in Starfield EFM have literally decreased the performance now I'll be testing the next game now I'll be running one of my favorite games, Alan Wake Part 2, Epic Games version. First I'll run the vanilla version of the game. Again UMA buffers are set to 6 GB. This game does not support FSR 3 frame generation. So I'll be using Luke FC's FSR 3 mod in order to inject FSR 3 frame generation. It basically replaces TLSS frame generation. Adrenaline settings for the game, VSync enable, VSync disable, anti lag setting enable, AFM disable for the timing, in game settings. 720p resolution FSR2 enable using its quality preset in game basing disable I have also disabled motion blur and film grain medium to low settings all effects enabled ray tracing disabled I will be using the same 25 watts manual profile for all of the games here there is Alan I am in the dark place here FPS is around oh my god someone <laughs> jumped on me FPS is around 34 Shadows are attacking me. They are hostile. This is not good. I'll use my shotgun. Very good. Now I'll enable AFMF. Open adrenaline. Enable AFMF from here. Check its status. Enable. Make sure VSync is disabled. I reloaded the same sequence. Observe the FPS counter when I am standing. Still FPS is around 60 to 70 When I move the camera around FPS drops down to around 40 35 frame generation gets disabled This is very annoying Typical AFMF behavior You can observe the sluggishness I'll engage in combat I'm just waiting for a shadow to jump on me Performance is inconsistent. Observe the frame pacing issue there. 34 FPS. This is not good at all. In this game, it's better to just not use AFMF. Now I'll be using FSR 3 frame generation. I need to install the mod. It will take me about a minute. I installed the mod. AFMF disabled. VSync enabled. In game settings, TLSS frame generation enabled. It's basically FSR 3 frame generation. Rest of the settings are left as this. I'll load the same sequence. We are in. Observe the FPS counter. Here FPS is around 65. I can observe the added amount of smoothness. I'll just move the camera in complete circles. Yeah, frame generation did not get disabled. Another easy win for FSR3 frame generation. Input response. Not my shotgun. Oh my god. Shadow attacked me. Use my flashlight. I'll use my flare gun. <laughs> that worked. For this game, it's highly recommended to use FSR 3 frame generation. Works very nicely on ROG Ally. Healed myself. 60 to 70 FPS using the 25 watts profile. Sprinting. Consistent performance. Now I'll be testing the next game. Now I'll be running the last of us part 1. It officially supports FSR 3. First I'll be running the vanilla version. Even for this game I have set the UMA buffer size to 6GB, 25W profile. Open adrenaline. 
VSync enable, VSync disable, anti lag setting enable, air fan disable for the time being, display settings 720p resolution, in game VSync disable, FSR3 upscaler enable using its quality preset, motion blur disable. I am using the medium preset. From here, I have disable motion blur. The rest of the settings are left as this of load the game this is downturn outskirts here we are getting around 40 fps yeah i can observe the sluggishness and moving the camera around very demanding area you can see we are hitting the gp bottleneck iran usage is around 4.5 gb i'll just enable afmf now afmf enabled check its status active make sure vsync is disabled Zoom the game, observe the FPS counter, FPS increased up to 75. Okay, I can observe some added amount of smoothness. But when I move the camera in complete circles, yeah, frame generation gets disabled. See the variable FPS. FPS suddenly dropping down from 70 to 40. This is not good at all. Camera feels so heavy no graphical artifacts this is not a problem with AFMF again FPS dropping down from 80 to 50 inconsistent performance now I'll disable AFMF and enable frame generation AFMF off vSync enabled frame generation enabled Rest of the settings are left as this. Apply change. FPS increased up to 72. Check out the input response. Can observe the added amount of smoothness. Good to see frame generation not getting disabled when I move the camera in complete circles. I can observe some minor coasting around the character model. Not easy to observe. Base FPS is around 40 so that may be a problem. Can cause some artifacts. Official FSR 3 frame generation was added to the game a month ago. It was buggy back then. Good to see developers fixing the issue. No frame pacing issue after enabling frame generation. Highly recommended to use FSR 3 frame generation in this game. It's a game change on ROG Ally. Last of Us running using medium preset. I'll be testing the next game. Now I'll be running Hogwarts Legacy. This game does not support FSR frame generation but it supports DLSS frame generation. I'll be using Luke FC's FSR 3 mod in order to replace DLSS frame generation with FSR frame generation. For this game, just set UMA buffer size to auto, otherwise the game will stutter a lot. Restart. Enter the line settings for the game, FreeSync enable, VSync disable, anti-lag setting enable, AFMF disable for the time being. In game settings, FSR2 enable using its quality preset 720p resolution. Motion player disabled using the medium preset, ray tracing disabled. Load the Hawksmeade area. Here is my character. I will be sprinting around Hawksmeade. Here FPS is around 55, not bad at all. 49 FPS. Lot of non playable characters here. Still using the 25 watts manual profile. I'll just enable AFMF now. Open adrenaline. AFMF checked. VSync disabled. Return to the game. FPS increased up to 100. I can observe some added amount of smoothness. Frame generation got disabled when I moved the camera in complete circles. Again, it's an inconsistent experience using AFMF. Sprinting around. Stable FPS and I'm not moving the camera around. Can observe the lag. FPS 
Beg your pardon. FPS suddenly drop from 90 to 60. It's back up to 100. So not impressed by AFMF and Oxford. I'll be installing the FSR 3 mod. Checking out its performance. 52 FPS. AFMF disabled. Desync enabled. Upscaler set to DLSS, quality preset, frame generation set to on, this is basically FSR3 frame generation, rest of the settings are left as this, loot the game, we are in, loaded the same sequence, check out the input response, FPS is around 95, 90-99, Frame generation does not get disabled when I move the camera in complete circles. Not observing any graphical artifacts. Games, hard elements are not flickering. Sprint around hawk speed. I can observe a screen tearing like effect on the left and right edges of the display. Common behavior of FSR 3. This is done in order to prevent the flickering of the game's interface. I hope AMD comes up with a better solution. Really impressed by the performance. This game is very demanding, consumes a lot of RAM. I have tested it on my desktop and this area RAM usage was around 25 GB. Yes, you heard it right. getting a very consistent performance on ROG LA. Again, an easy win for FSR3 frame generation. It even handled Hawksmeet. Input response. Using my wand. Jump by pressing the X key. PC version of this game supports DualSense controller by default. We'll see PlayStation prompts. Time to conclude the video. In all four games, FSR3 frame generation performed better than AFMF. Performance was very consistent. Frame generation did not get disabled even when I moved the camera in complete circles during fast visual motion. Even when the games were running at around 30 to 35 FPS, some amount of smoothness was added to them by FSR3 frame generation. Input delay was not an issue. AFMF on the other hand provided a very inconsistent and a sluggish gameplay experience. Frame generation kept getting disabled whenever I moved the camera around quickly. In some games AFMF causes a performance regression, you are better off running the game without AFMF. But it did produce less graphical artifacts than FSR3 frame generation. I would not recommend using AFMF in games that are running at an FPS lower than 60. That's it with the video guys, I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.